Hello, my name is David Klebanov. I'm a leader in Cisco SD-WAN Technical Marketing Organization. And today we're going to talk about performance testing. So when you're designing your Cisco SD-WAN solution, it's important to make sure that all the testing scenarios that you plan for deployment are accommodated. So this particular section, we're going to talk about performance testing in regard to the solution that you're trying to develop. So today with us, we have Nikolai Pitaev, who is going to take us through the presentation. Take it away, Nikolai. Thanks, David. It's really about lessons learned out of customer testing we saw recently in context of SD WAN. So we will be not talking about generic performance testing or how to validate performance numbers we have. It's all about how to test SD WAN, especially at the customer side, verifying your design and your scale numbers you assume and you want. Mm -hmm. So see it really as a lessons learned out of some really important customer project. We have three different topics. Before you begin, it's really important to not start performance testing for SDN immediately. It, we have some recommendations before you will start. Then it's all about test bed setup. How can I avoid bottlenecks in my infrastructure, which will prevent me from getting best SD WAN results, which I can have? And last but not least, common mistakes done not only on the customer side. Uh, I did the same mistakes or similar mistakes in my own setup. So it's all about common mistakes that we all do. And now, hopefully, you will be uh, avoiding this. So before you begin, you should get official supported numbers and verified numbers from Cisco. Second very important topic is to select the right software version. Because performance, not only as even any performance can vary depending on the software version. So make sure, double check with your account team, double check with engineering, is it the right version for my SD WAN use case or not. And last point is technical, but it's really important to understand before even hit the first button on the traffic generator side. You have to understand load distribution algorithm on SD WAN router. What does it mean, load distribution? It's quite simple. If I have router A on one side, and this is my T gen traffic generator connected to it, it can have multiple links, like internet, MPLS, something else. And then the question is, what is the algorithm? How does this particular router load distribution across multiple links? Because what you might have is link number one will be used for all traffic. So one common mistake is you expect that router will load balance across three links, but reality will be just one. The question is why. So I have a question for, for you just to help to understand what it is all about. It's the question is, hey, is my VH router using source IP, destination IP only for load balancing? Is it using source port, destination port? Is it using something else like a TOS? So please make sure you understand load distribution algorithm for your router for SD WAN. That's the key lessons learned we have for you before you begin. Well, obviously you can figure it out by trial and error doing <laughs> multiple <laughs> tests, but that's not the recommended way. So sure. check the documentation and then make sure that your traffic profile is set in such a way that you will use all links you want. So, so are, are you saying that if you do not account for that, then basically you may have an overutilized circuit and an underutilized circuit, and your overall performance is not going to 
reflect the right numbers. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So basically, uh, a lot of use cases we have is just going through link number one, but your intention is actually your intention is to use both links, all three. Mm -hmm. And depending on the traffic profile defined on traffic generator, you might end up in using just one. I see. Second important topic is your test setup, your test bed. It's quite obvious if you are looking at performance testing for SD-WAN, you should try to connect SD-WAN routers back to back. Of course, you can use your underlying switching infrastructure in the lab, but keep in mind that can be a bottleneck. So in this setup, we have traffic generator firearms connected to uh, DC1 VH2K router 1. And I have a direct 10 key link going to the second router. So I don't have any switching infrastructure. It's really back-to-back -back connection. And that's what we recommend for performance testing. Well, then I have a tricky question for you. Mm -hmm. So if we're testing solution, um, it's not realistic that I don't have any wide area network in between. I still have my internet and MPLS. So then how do we account in this testing for the variables of, of the WAN, loss, latency, jitter? Right, what so that will be on the next slide. Okay. Actually, the recommendation <laughs> is quite simple. Start with this first basic setup. Okay. And make sure that your numbers you are getting without delays, jitters, packet losses, back to back are in line with our numbers okay. because we also have the same test. So once you have the same or similar result for this simple test, then you can, as a second phase, you can go ahead and tweak your configuration, add QoS, add some additional features, mm -hmm. and then insert some delays for the van transport. I see. So it's like a baseline. Yes, this is baseline testing first, okay. and then most advanced uh, feature-rich testing second. Okay, makes sense. Second recommendation is please set up appropriate traffic profile, at least for the baseline test. So what we test is with UDP fixed 361 bytes. It's, we call it IMIX-like. It's not a true IMIX profile because IMIX is a combination of different packet sizes. In this case, we are sending UDP 361 fixed. And we have 1,000 different source and destination flows. We don't test with one. We are using 1,000 different flows. Kind of randomized, right? The question is, why do I need 1,000 or 100 flows? Um, we have in our platform different data cores responsible for shifting packets from A to B. Mm -hmm. If you send only one stream, most likely you will end up on one core. If you have multiple cores, you will be not utilizing additional horsepower you have. Mm -hmm. So that's why we recommend to use 1,000 flows to load balance your traffic across all cores which you have. It okay. basically comes back to this load distribution okay. uh, question, but this load distribution not uh, over multiple links, it's load distribution across CPUs or cores you have. Okay. Next, really important topic for traffic profile definition is drop rate. You can start with non-drop rate, NDR, which is really zero packet loss. We recommend to start with 0.1% packet loss and then change it if you need. RFC 2544 describes the way how to test performance and we have binary search algorithm 
in this RFC 2544, we recommend to use duration of one minute per iteration, eight iterations for the test. Of course, you can always tweak it. We saw also in some customer projects uh, testing zero packet losses for 10 minutes per run. It was extremely um, you know, demanding profile, but it's, it's okay. I would not start with that. I would start with the default baseline profile we recommend. And then if you see the same results we have, then you can change parameters as you want. And that comes back to our discussion a couple of minutes before. I will start with a simple router configuration without DPI and network address translation and QoS and something else. Mm -hmm. Start simple, compare results, and then activate features you need. So last three slides are about common mistakes we all did with uh, performance testing for SD WAN. A lot of people, they start with one stream only. That will mean you will be not using all data cores you have on that platform. So please test with at least 100 different streams, ideally with 1,000. Second common mistake is unrealistic packet mixes. Yes, we can discuss if 361 bytes UDP is the real uh, traffic profile or would it be better to use through iMix, would it be better to test with large packets, etc., or small packets. But again, we see a lot of tests done with unrealistic packet mixes, and that's why we recommend to start with simple profile first and then change it later if you need. Similar to unrealistic packet sizes, we see some tests done with unrealistic QoS policy. I would start with a simple QoS um, and then change it as needed. One additional question to check is, do I need IPsec on all links which I need? In this example, the question is, hey, if you're using MPLS, that will be a trusted network normally. Um, do I need IPsec or MPLS? If not, you can run standard GRE. You can play with that. You can test with GRE first, enable IPsec, and check the difference. But the bottom line is performance testing, it's all about really last uh, comma and a lot of numbers behind comma. So you need to understand the impact of specific features. And here, this particular trick, start with GRE first and then activate I IPsec, will give you a feeling how much impact do I have because of IPsec. Last point regarding common mistakes is about CPU utilization. Normally, traditional routers are tested up to 75 probably 80% of CPU utilization. After 80%, we have call admission control. We have some specific protect, protection for the router just to keep it up. And SD-WAN performance is a little bit different, especially if you are dealing with VH Cloud. It has a DPDK library integrated, which will pull interfaces on a regular basis, constantly. Even if you don't have any packets, your CPU will be high. High means like 99%, which is normal. Mm. So some people, they get confused because of that. They look at CPU and say, hey, why it's running 90% or 99%? Um, it's strange. It's OK, because it's a new virtualized world where you have DPDK and other components doing this constant polling, and that's why you will not be able to test in this new SD-WAN area with old methods where you will go only up to 75% CPU. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so that's in a nutshell the summary uh, lessons learned about performance testing for SD events. Okay. Well, thank you, Nicola. I think it's it's important because um, testing a solution is is, is is important, right? And testing performance of the solution, I guess it's many times overlooked. Uh, maybe sometimes people are focusing more attention on feature functionality, which is important as well, uh, but performance is many times overlooked. Would you say that uh, in your experience, uh, have you seen this as, a, as an overlooked item, or uh, how do you see that performance testing is being treated? I would treated? say it's uh, not really uh, documented in the same way as feature. If you want to test, let's say, TLOC extension sure. or something like QF, you go to the web page, documentation page, you see the description, TLOC extension, you have to do this and that. Right. If you want to test performance, there is no description right. how to set it up, how to configure it. it. There's no one generic description for traffic profile. So it's probably because of the nature. You have multiple features uh, in the setup. Your setup probably was done with some bottlenecks in between, like switching infrastructure. So it's totally different uh, testing approach. Uh, compared to feature testing. And that's why sometimes it's so difficult. So uh, it, it's a fair point. Um, another thing I was wondering is um, how realistic do you try to build your, um, your setup? Uh, because I think you, you showed a very simple example of just two devices. But would you say when you recommend uh, people go for performance testing, would, how realistic would you say they need to build the network? Do they need to build you know, similar data centers, branch offices, multiple transports, um, different conditions within the transport, loss, latency, jitter. How far do you stretch your, your recommendation in that, in that regard? So I will not try to simulate the whole network okay. because it's too complex and it has multiple places. For the performance testing on this DVM, I will try to focus on two things. Okay. Data center performance testing so I will just have one data center connected to two transports and try to simulate data center performance. Second point is try to simulate branch, especially if you have, well, let's say you have three different categories, small branch, medium, and large. Then you have to run three tests. But still, uh, that will be a different testing compared to data center. Why? because you have different traffic profile and you have different performance numbers. Sure. So that's why you have to test it differently. But I will not try to simulate the whole network in one setup. I will run two different tests, data center performance and branch performance. Okay, okay. well that makes sense. All right, well thank you very much Nikolai for uh, taking us through, uh, through this. So in this video we've uh, taken a look in, in regard to testing and specifically performance testing for, uh, for the solution. We looked at uh, how to plan the performance testing, what are the elements that need to be considered for successful performance uh, testing. We've looked at the recommendations that uh, we have coming from our own uh, field deployment uh, when dealing with uh, solution performance testing. And at the end, we also touched on the common mistakes to avoid to make sure that your uh, performance testing that you're trying to, to, um, to carry out in that particular solution is, is meaningful. So I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you very much for joining.